Time to re time to self evaluate everything from the practice to everything that they do. And it's just a tough moment waking up after a three game sweep on the road. Peyton Stovall to lead things off. Peyton, a 321 hitter on the year out there at second base. And the first pitch from Connor McBride. Foul down the line and left. That'll be a souvenir early for one of the Tiger fans. There is Stovall, the junior from Haunt, Louisiana, 5'11, 200 pounder. A captain of this team. That breaking ball stays up tight. Up top, McBride has the best numbers on this team. He has been working some midweek starts. Last three starts has thrown five innings in each one of those starts, but his ERA at 2.41. Nice 3 0 record on the year. And with the absence of Gonzalez, there's been some movement in the, the starting rotation. And he gets the ball in game number one here on a Thursday night. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit of a result of what happened last weekend of going, all right, we need to we need to figure something out. This guy's throwing really well in the midweek games for us. And he's been hot. Let's throw him out there on Friday uh, on the Thursday night. And I think a lot of it also goes to going from a, a weekend series of Friday, Saturday, Sunday to a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. Right. You keep also in his normal Friday night start. Boy, and that catch is Stovall. Boy, you can hear that clunk. He took that really well. He did. Well, it sounded like he hit one of those pads. Hard slider trying to go down and in on Stovall. And uh, that would be just a little too far down and in. There are the numbers on McBride. 18 and two thirds. How about that whip? A .86. Strike out to walk ratio, almost four to one. Now he'll face the two hole hitter, Kendall Diggs. Six game hit streak going for Kendall. Kendall the junior at Olaf, Kansas. Limited action as a freshman, but boy, did he play a bunch last year. Was mainly their DH, but injuries moved him into the outfield late in the season. Now he handles that right field spot. Really has been working on his defensive side of the game. Always knew he could swing it with 343 average, five homers, and 16 runs batted in. Really good weekend last weekend against Missouri, four for 12. Two home runs, two doubles. And that's the thing. Coach Van Horn was talking, and he's like, I really don't feel like our offense has been playing that well. And I need I need more. And they're what number one in the country unanimous. 17 and two. Bound straight back. I think the scariest thing that I read in going over all the pregame stuff was that this is the sixth time in seven years that Arkansas has started out yeah. the SEC play three and oh. And then the, the, the funnier thing is that all six of those years, they started the season 4-0. Dave Van Horn, the 23 SEC Coach of the Year. Here's the 2-2 on the way. And it's up and away. It's 3-2 now. Stovall's only got one stolen base on the year. Irish has not been real effective. He's thrown out three base runners out of the 17 that have attempted. Let's see if Stovall gets moving. There he goes, swing and a miss. Throw down to second in time. It's a strike him out, throw him out. Double play for the Tigers. Well, that would be four of 18 now by Ike Irish. Grit gets a great pitch to throw. I feel like Diggs might have been protecting the base runner a little bit, not thinking through the 3 2 count. If he takes it as ball four, swings at a bad pitch. Irish gets a really good pitch up and away, gets clear, perfect throw. 
to get your pitcher Connor McBride some confidence after a, a hit by pitch to Stovall a strike out of Diggs and now you get Vahiva Aloy the shortstop. You know Dave I always look back and evaluated where a game went wrong and then you also have you know look back when it went right and where there's one pitch. That pitch very easily could have been ball four runners on first and second and now instead it is strike three and a double play. Yeah two on nobody out and your three four five guys coming up. Yeah. Mm. Now base is empty for Aloy, the sophomore off the island of Maui transfer in from Sacramento State. There is a strike. It is one and two a consensus freshman All-American last year at Sac State where he hit 376 with 14 homers five triples 15 doubles and poured out 88 hits. To chase it downstairs. Two and two. All right, he's been painting the outside corner on Aloy. Tries to get him to go fishing after a slider that starts right in that same spot, right on the outside corner, diving off. And Aloy did not even register at it. Just misses three and two. The bride came in with 15 strikeouts in 18 innings of work. Lifted in the air out to right. Bobby Pierce goes up to the warning track, and that one is in to the bullpen. The fourth home run for Vahiva Aloy. Dave Van Horn said he is starting to hit. He's starting to get hot. You showed him way too many fastballs outside part of the plate. It's all you've shown him. You've not tried to keep him honest at all. And this is what happens when somebody that can flat out swing it with some pop dives out and covers the outside part of the plate. That's just a great piece of hitting. Uh, opposite field blast. Young man showed you some pop as a freshman last year with 14 home runs. Now has four here in the Southeastern Conference as a member of this Arkansas club and gives this team a one nothing lead. Again how important was the strike him out throw him out. <laughs> I was just thinking that. That very easily could have been a three run bomb instead of a solo shot with two outs. Out straight back. So far, McBride has gotten all three batters to two strikes. It's something that Butch Thompson has kind of talked about. It's like, you know, we got to be better on our two strike pitches. Yeah. That, obviously, that was a 3 2 pitch, so you want to make sure it's over the plate, but still, center cut. I would question if that pitch was a strike. Yeah, I think it was outside and off. To the right, the shift is on. Hernandez gets it, but Arkansas strikes for one. 50 strikeouts, 23 innings, very very low. Three three hits a game as of right now per nine innings. I think the number that just jumps off the page to me is he has recorded 50 strikeouts in 69 recorded outs while he's been on the mound. That's 72 percent of the outs. I'm glad you did the math on that. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> that's unbelievable. 72 yeah. percent. At some point I'm going to start to wonder if the defense is falling asleep. <laughs> right. He gives him a little taste every now and then. Here's Weiss at the top of this lineup. Well, this is the game for Auburn right now. They have to make sure that they get Hagen Smith in the strike zone. If they start chasing stuff out of the zone, they are going to be in a world of trouble. Three and one now. On Cooper Weiss, the grad student out of Fort Myers, Florida, transferred in this year from Miami of Ohio. Started his career at Coastal Carolina for three years before working his way to Miami of Ohio. He went three for 11 versus the Commodores over the weekend. 
but was the MAC Defensive Player of the Year last year. How about that behind 3 and 0 oh, and just picked up his 51st strikeout of the year. Well, and that's the thing on Hagen Smith. He almost is better with accuracy on his slider than he is on a fastball. And we saw that early. 3-1 count, he throws a slider to Weiss. 3-2 count, gets away with the slider up and away. But, I mean, if you're able to throw that good of a breaking ball behind in the count, you are going to be able to be successful for a very long time. Ike Irish now with an eight-game hit streak. He didn't waste any time. Irish had four hits and 13 at bats against the Commodores and starts this series off with a base knock to the right side. If you're looking right there, that last at bat is a couple of guys who have a chance to play baseball for a long time. Ike Irish can flat out swing it, and Hagen Smith can flat out throw it. And Irish was not waiting around on that slider. And now Bobby Pierce, he looks at a first pitch strike at 96 miles an hour. Pierce, 239 on the year, the grad student out of Scottsdale, Arizona. His fourth year at Auburn. He spent a couple of years before coming here at junior college. He slaps that one out of play. He's one of those COVID older kids. I mean, he'll be 24 years old in May. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of these freshmen are coming into the SEC and they're playing against grown men. Yeah. Here's one of them right there, and Bobby Pierce. One of the team captains for Auburn. Vocal leader. Boy, oh, swings and one, down and in, and that gets away from Hudson White. That'll be a strikeout, but a runner at second with two outs. Pierce was a little bit late on that fastball previous pitch. So then Hagen Smith takes advantage of that, knowing that he's got to gear up a little bit more for a fastball and spikes a 58 foot slider right at, it starts at the bottom of the zone. Pierce thinks he's got to get the bat started, ends up swinging it a pitch way out of the zone. That one's fouled back. So the first three pitches of the game by Hagen Smith were all balls. Since then, he's thrown eight straight strikes. He just needed a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Just Some, wasn't ready. Right? Some, well, <laughs> right. Sometimes you go out there and you don't use your warm-ups right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now you're getting used to the mound at live action, which I tell all my kids that I ever work with. I'm going, use those eight warm-up pitches like you're in the game. Yeah. Because you have a new mound, you're in a new place, and don't go out there and do what I always did in the big leagues and go ball one, ball two, <laughs> ball three, ball four. And then I'm like, hey, i got to figure it out now. <laughs> Uh, that was quite impressive. How about three straight balls to start the inning and then 11 straight strikes to help those kids along. Did that for a while, then decided he wanted to get back into baseball. Goes to Mesa College thinking he's going to play ball, but then COVID hit in 2020. So then he transfers to Palomar, another junior college out in California, thinking that they're going to play baseball in 2021. Got a little bit of baseball in, then transfers again to St. John's Junior College. Does well, and then Auburn finds him in the transfer portal, and here he is now pitching for the Tigers. I mean, the guy didn't play baseball for basically two and a half years. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's not supposed to work that way. I mean, I'm wondering how much throwing he did in between Anything, yeah. just playing catch. It's an amazing story. Just shut it down after his 2017 high school junior season. And now he's pitching on a Thursday night against the number one team in America. It's just a crazy story. Here's a little slow roller to third, scooped up by Fabian and makes a nice play on his Jared Sprague Lots is retired for the first time of the inning. Boy, hey, what? He had to make a Pretty good uh, run to get that ball, did Fabian. Fabian was playing way back with two strikes. And he has done this very well this year, coming to made the third base position solid. He's been unbelievably defensive. Here's Rotslovich to step in. 
the Razorback left fielder. First pitch he sees fouls that off. Lovich, the senior out of Overland Park, Kansas. A Missouri transfer where he played three years with the Tigers, now in his first season at Arkansas. 27 starts last year with Missouri, but missed some time with an injury, but still hit 306 with four home runs. And before he got hurt, was kind of on a little bit of a tear at 16 conference games, hit 306. I remember calling a game on Missouri was playing Georgia. And he was going crazy in Athens, had a monster game, hit for the cycle against the Bulldogs last year and became the first Tiger since 95 to hit for the cycle. And thankfully, the boys at the league office gave him player of the week honors for that effort. That was nice. Yeah. Logan's been a solid player, transferred from Missouri after three years there. Did not get the start opening day. That went to Jason Jones out in left field. But Lovitz just continues to hit. And as my daddy always said, if you hit, you play. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Chase is one up in the zone. And now, now two and two. Couple of people behind the plate on that foul ball. We'll do it again. Just doing enough to stay alive. Spoiled that little cut fastball down in the zone. Swing and a miss. It's key to being successful as a pitcher is to get guys out, out of the zone. Lovich goes chasing a fastball way out of the zone. Change eye levels, change speeds. Try to make pitches that start out as strikes and then leave the zone. That one never started out as a strike, but Lovich was geared up for a fastball and went chasing. Now Hudson White, the catcher, one of the premier transfer portal gets. For Arkansas, junior out of Keller, Texas. Played last year at Texas Tech. Actually, a couple of years with the Red Raiders. Big 12 Freshman of the Year and Freshman All-America back in 2022, where he started 58 games in the Big 12. He had 337 in conference games as a freshman. Numbers dipped at the plate just a bit last year, but still hit 296 with 11 bombs. Solid offensive and defensive player. Led the team in hitting, led Arkansas in hitting in the fall. Slaps that one out to right. Pierce will chase it down, and White will stop at first. What a two-out base knock for the Hogs. You talked about the two-strike approach for Auburn and trying to get make good 0-2 pitches, and that was not a good 0-2 pitch. Fastball up and away. White stays inside of it, laces it in the right field. Pierce gets over there quickly and gets the ball in, keeps it to a single. Yeah, I found out over my career that that is not a good 0-2 pitch. <laughs> uh, up and away. Uh. <laughs> Well, let's see, you know, again, McBride didn't play a whole lot of baseball for a while, so he's still learning. So he's learning, yeah. Well, you know what? That's a mental note right, right there. Take that. Mental note, fastball <laughs> up and away right. in the zone is not a good 0-2 yeah, yeah. pitch. Nolan Souza, the freshman, grabbing a bat out of Honolulu, Hawaii. Two Hawaiians in this Arkansas lineup. He looks at a strike. Pretty good week last week against Missouri. Three for nine, two home runs, three RBI. Swing 
swing and a miss. Tell you what, he's got some juice in the bat. His first hit as an Arkansas Razorback was a double that left the bat at 108 miles an hour. <laughs> Two and two to count. Yeah, make right. Going change ups away, sliders down out of the zone. Got ahead early with a fastball in. Let's see if he goes back to that right here. Goes back to that change up down and away. It's got a little bit of sink action to it. Swing and a miss. That will be the obviously 17 is even crazier. That was Hagen Smith's performance earlier this year when he tied an Arkansas single game record with 17 strikeouts against Oregon State. Fifth all time Arkansas and career case already with 249. He needs 95 more with a school record as that ball is belted off the bat of Chris Stanfield. The sophomore at Tallahassee laces it, but he is out for the, for the first out of the inning. But that was some kind of performance, and, and the first 15 outs in that game were via the strikeout. Think about that. Five straight innings of strikeouts. <laughs> I can't even imagine. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I, I think the funniest thing is, though, in his quote, he's like, I didn't know how many I had. I was like, really? You didn't know that not one guy's put a ball in play? Well, I tell you what, was that that was close to Mainers being out of the batter's box when that ball hit him. But he's pointing down. Now I was right there. He was yeah, in the box. He was still in the box. He was just showing everybody. I was right there. Yeah. Don't this get is excited. Where my foot was. Right. Don't get excited. <laughs> there it is again. My foot was right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. It was close. Mason Mainers hitting 359 with three homers. He will look at a strike. It was quickly 0 and 2. One of two Auburn Tigers that transferred from Jacksonville State. Out of Estavia Hills, Alabama. Out to the right side, scooped up there by Ben McLaughlin, the first baseman who steps on the back, and Mainers is retired for out number two. I like the lefties have done a fairly decent job so far, and I mean, Irish gets a single. Not a bad at bat right there by Mainers. But this is what Butch Thompson talked about in our weekly call was that he needs the righties to do a lot more, especially today. And here is one of those righties, Derek Fabian hitting 238 on the year, has five home runs. Transfer from Florida. Yeah. His brother, Judd Fabian, great Florida Gator. Now in the Orioles organization, boy, he was some kind of talent. Well, everybody's getting ready to walk off the field, including the pitcher Hagan Smith, but he needs to stay for one more at least. Well, everybody but Scott Fine, the home plate umpire, <laughs> right. who is the most important person making the call. Here's the one, two, and that one is just off the plate. That one nobody flinched. That was only like six inches outside. Boy, slider down and in. That's a good take by Fabian. Yeah, it's a little defensive. Looking down, and Hagen Smith wanted the check swing. More of a drop the bat to get it out of the way. Took a couple extra pitches, but Smith gets yet another strike. Accomplish that. The Auburn women in action right now, trailing early. It's early. It's 11 8 to trailing to Arizona right now, but Auburn men get after it tomorrow. in Spokane, Washington, which is a very sore subject for uh, anybody here in Auburn, yeah, Alabama. I noticed that when I came to <laughs> it's town It's a little, today. yeah. Yeah. 
It just Dave, just save you. Do not bring it up. Well, I, I unfortunately did, and people were, were asking me why, and I'm like, uh, can I fix it? It's a little late. <laughs> Wilmsmeyer out to right, and that'll drop right in front of the right fielder, Bobby Pierce. Wilmsmeyer, the nine hole hitter, hitting just 233 on the year. Gets things started here in the third with a base hit. It goes down in the book as a single. It was not pretty. Slider down and away, and a flared. I call that one a flare, Dave. It was a flare. It, it was. was a flare. It was a flare. But goes in the book as, as a knock. So McBride will pitch with a runner on and nobody out here. The lineup flips back to Peyton Stovall, who was hit by a pitch to start this game, but then was thrown out at second base. Just off the plate. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, with Hagen Smith being arguably the best pitcher in the country, wouldn't you maybe lay down a bunt right here, try to get in scoring position, just get a couple of runs on the board and let him sit back and go? And then on the other side of it, Auburn's got to be going, we just got to find a way to get a couple of runs on the board, maybe get him out of the game. You know, I just think the game my thought, I was thinking through that comment yeah. about Bunning. I, I think the game now has become such an offensive game. I mean, we're on pace to match home run totals, historic home run totals right now, the yeah. way the ball's jumping. So I think some of that probably plays into the minds of these staffs right now that the 2-1, the, 3-2 the two, two game maybe doesn't play well right now because the way the ball's popping. And, and certainly Auburn can get it out of here. I yeah. mean, they can square it up with the best of them. I just, there's a big four pitch walk. But I, I, I think back to my days playing with the Orioles and Roger Clemens would come in and be opening day. And we'd be trying to bunt guys over yeah. and it ended up being a self-fulfilling prophecy where we would lose two to one. <laughs> you know, because right. we're giving up so many outs to get yeah. guys into scoring position and now and analytically it's kind of a no-no to give up an out on a sacrifice bunt, but I'm going, I got Hagen Smith, man. If I can get to three runs. Yeah, it's a different dynamic with him know? on the mound. Yeah. Certainly, it, it, uh, it, it may change your thought in that regard. But as you are familiar with, the old Weaver, the three-run shot can certainly change a game, right? <laughs> a lot of people like that, too, yeah. yeah. Diggs squared around to bunt. Thought the pitch was high. Let's see if he squares again. Kendall Diggs struck out his first time up. This Arkansas team, 10th in the conference in batting average at 287. Auburn right behind him at 11th in the league. 92 in the fastball, fouled straight back. Diggs about lost his helmet on that swing. He was trying for the Earl Weaver three run yes, home he run. Was. He was trying really hard right there. <laughs> right. I mean, it's funny now that I, I, you, know, you go through all the game notes and Diggs has 20 career home runs. Six of them are three run home runs. I mean, I've you, it's just funny how some of the information that you get and all of a sudden that one just kind of clicks in. I'm going, oh yeah. Yeah, he has six of those three run home runs and two grand slams. He's getting his job done. I'm going to hit a home run. I'm going to have people on base to celebrate it with me. Well, they've always felt he could swing it at Arkansas. One of the issues was just making him a reliable defensive player. And he spent a lot of time in the offseason at the Cape League working on defensive skills out in right field. So he has locked down that spot for the time being. Did you ever go to the Cape? I did not. Did not. I was supposed to go to Alaska my sophomore yeah. year. Freshman year I went home. My sophomore year I went to Team USA. And same with my junior year. 
That works. That worked. Yeah. Yeah. I turned down Alaska. I was like, I'm never going to get <laughs> to Alaska. This is probably my only chance. Fouled into that Arkansas dugout. But Diggs went up to the Cape, spent uh, that summer, six, seven weeks up there, playing a bunch of right field. And his team ended up winning the Cape Cod Championship. So he got some extra at bats and extra yeah. reps out in, rep, uh, in right field. That's a high level of play. Looks, Diggs knew it too, just couldn't pull the trigger. Well, that is a big strikeout right field for our only run of the game. Back to Connor McBride. That was just a great sequence of pitches. I mean, it was changeups away. He was showing slider, and then all of a sudden, hey, you have not seen a fastball in yet, and he vapor locks digs. Starts Aloy off slider off the plate. Aloy was named the WAC Freshman of the Year. He finished sixth in the league in batting average, th third in hits, eighth in home runs. I mean, if you're just looking at him in the box, he looks hitterish. And I swear they list him at 6'2, 200, but you and I both agree. He, he looks big. Yeah, he looks bigger than that. Runners on first and second. He has established, and I'm talking about Aloy, that he can go deep on a fastball away. So in essence, he has just taken that pitch away from McBride. So now McBride's got to go somewhere with a fastball. Do you go in on a power hitter? That's the question. Well, he got him to drop his bat on the swing. He tried to hit a three-run home run right there. And McBride was up to the game through a little cut fastball at 86. Just enough off speed to get a swing and a miss. Down in the dirt. That'll get one runner over to third base. The Stovall slides in safely. So runners at the corners now and one down. Wilmsmeyer. And Wilmsmeyer over there at first base. Stovall uh, at third base. Stovall's over at first. Got ahead of myself. Forgot it's been so long. I forgot Wil Wilmsmeyer singled out there to start the <laughs> inning. On. It hasn't been that long yeah, yet. <laughs> Getting older. Yeah, it happens. You still look good for your age. Thank you, though. Appreciate that. Needed that. Needed that at that moment. Good teammate. That one stays inside. Now they're loaded. So Aloy gets the walk, and here comes your cleanup hitter, Ben McLaughlin, rounded out to end the first. Right, did not throw one fastball that at bat. Literally, when I see you down as a pitcher, really does. Every at bat is a fight. We'd well, like to get that first pitch swing out, right? Yeah. Every now and then. I mean, I would love like a changeup right here, get a ground ball to second base, double play. He went with the changeup, yeah. and McLaughlin was not swinging at it. I might throw it again. Oh, double it Soft, up. Okay. Soften it up a little bit, you know, just a shade, maybe a mile an hour off. There, there it was. There you go. So now the hard part is I want to throw a third, <laughs> but you know that yeah. that's not going to go well. So right. I'm showing the fastball away, missing by a foot. Have Irish set up away, show him your 92, 93 mile an hour fastball, then go back to the changeup. That was a nasty changeup, by the way, down and away. Elevates it, fastball. Definitely playable for Bobby Pierce as he will charge. Let's see what we have going on here. Wilmsmeyer tags. Here's the throw home and plenty of time. Got him at the plate. Inning is over. Longtime Arkansas coach Dave Van Horn. Coach, thanks for joining us. Uh, big picture kind of talk about this team since the first time we've had a chance to really see you. Obviously, a lot of people around the country believe this team is uh, the best in America right now. And I'm just curious, from a coach's perspective, you know the wards, you see everything. How do you feel about this group? 
Well, we, we're still getting better. We we can play a lot better than we played. We've had some really good innings. Pitching's been really consistent. It's been obviously really, really good, and one reason because of the guy on the mound right now. But, you know, we've got to keep getting better, and, and they know it. And, and I like them because they work hard. I mean, our guys work really hard, so I think we will. Hey, Coach Greg Olson. Hagen Smith, what is he when you watch him pitch? I mean, you, you called him an animal workout nut. What do you see when you're watching him pitch? Well, he's just fearless out there. And, uh, you know, he's got a, you know, three plus pitches. And, uh, you know, this year he's become a he's become a starter, a really good pitcher. And, uh, you know, he's he's not really scared of any situation. He, he was our closer for a while last year and the year before. So if he gets into a little bit of a jam, uh, he feels like he can get out of it. And he usually does. All right, Coach, listen, thanks for visiting with us. We'll let you get going. Always a pleasure to visit with you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. That's a guy right now that's got a lot on his mind. And it, yeah, and it was not talking to us. Yeah. No, he's, <laughs> Good answers. He's got, he's got a daughter that is due any minute yeah. with triplets. And here he is in Auburn, Alabama, flew in a little bit later than the team got here. Um, just to make sure things were okay at the house. And tomorrow's a big day. The doctor's coming in. And, doing another check and um, he may depending on how things work out he may head out of here and miss a day to go back and be with his daughter she did, he doesn't have any to be the first grandkids he got three of them He's, three of them all at once i'm like excited that, we were talking before the end i'm all excited for him two boys and a girl is right. that right yeah yeah he said he would leave in a heartbeat his daughter went into labor here is christian hall no swing says Third base umpire, Alfredo Bertin. I'm just kind of looking at that last pitch going, where was the pitch? Great slider away. There's yet another strikeout for Hagen Smith, number five. Dave, have you noticed they don't throw the ball around when he strikes up anybody out? I mean, the infield's barely getting used. Wouldn't they throw it around to keep their arms loose? I know it's a r regular routine that he's striking everybody out, but I'm, I'm throwing it around the infield. Just they need to throw the ball every once in a while. I, I, I don't know about <laughs> I don't know about college game, but I know as having a youngster in travel ball and high school ball, like the coach gives him, like if you guys can't throw it around the horn, oh, yeah, we take that away. Maybe they screwed something Maybe up. Maybe they, they got taken away. <laughs> <laughs> the number one team in the country, <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> Is not allowed to throw the ball around the infield because they got it taken away. I love that. <laughs> I don't know that, but I know. Uh, I did the same thing. Yeah. Here's a high chopper back up the middle and a base hit. Javon Hernandez. Could be a good series. Sharply hit, scooped up there at third base by Sprague Lott across the diamond, and McLaughlin stays on the bag, and that'll be a double play as Cooper Weiss hits into the Five, four, three. SEC right now. Yep, until Todd Helton comes in. But I will reference Joe Sewell, went to Alabama in 1930s. And Alabama was not part of the SEC conference because it was not an SEC conference at that point. So somehow he gets omitted in that rule. But Frank had an unbelievable career here at Auburn. Seventh pick by the White Sox in 89. He was one of those guys that was just frightening at the plate. Of where you're looking in, and you're looking in. Well, look at his arms. Jeez. Oh, he, he came walking <laughs> into, into spring ball. He, play, he played football his freshman year. Yeah. He came walking into spring ball his freshman year, and he was 6'5", 260, straight out of being a tight end in football. And all natural just, yeah. I mean, Enormous, and then you see him in the box, and you're going, "If he hits the ball back at me with an aluminum bat, I am not playing baseball anymore." Jared Sprague lot off the fist to the right side. Hernandez chases it down. Heck of a play by the Auburn Tigers second baseman. Talk about covering some ground. Wow. Hernandez was shaded behind second base. This ball was not hit well. Fastball in on the hands. 
I would love to see how many yards he just covered right there. And then an accurate throw moving into foul territory. Just an unbelievable play. First out of the inning. That would get us to Ross Lovich. He pops it up. Talking about first pitch outs, well, they finally got one. Rainers out and left, Corrals and two down. You need those just for the comfort of an easy out. And so you can relax just a shade because Arkansas has been putting every at bat has been a good at bat where you're fighting five or six pitches and they're spoiling two strike pitches. You just feel like as a pitcher, you're fighting, you can't put anybody away. And then finally you have two quick outs and you're going, oh, maybe, maybe I can settle in right here. He's got Hudson White at the plate. Hudson singled his first time up. And looks at a strike. One and one. McBride did the Hudson White last at bat. Got ahead two strikes with sliders down. And then tried to sneak a piece of cheese past him on an 0-2 pitch, left it up and out. Let's see how McBride's trying to work him with sliders. 70 pitches for Connor McBride, which Thompson telling us Connor certainly has stretched out. He's a 100-pitch type guy. If he's pitching well, wouldn't have a problem using him that much tonight. Ground ball through the left side. That is the fourth hit of the night for Arkansas. This is a nice piece of hitting. He knows where McBride's going to go. He's going to go with a fastball away. McBride has not shown many fastballs in to right-handed hitters. His strong side of the plate as a pitcher is glove side. So he's been strong into lefties, away from righties. Hudson White gets out there, dives, and covers the outside corner and hooks it into the 56 hole. And here is Nolan Souza, again, the freshman out of Hawaii. Egan Aloy, two Hawaiians on this team. There have only been three Hawaii players, Hawaiian players, in the history of Arkansas baseball. And one of those actually coached Nolan Souza out in Hawaii by Rick Nomura on the Hawaii Tigers travel team. How about that easy out? Cooper McMurray was standing on the bag because a runner was over there with him. And it, you know, down to one pitch and get him, a, you know, get ahead in the count. How's that looking so far? Yeah, it was tough t first time through. You know, we had too many strikeouts, Greg, and you're sitting there on the side. You want to put a few more in play, but that's pretty good stuff. He's he's yeah. heading towards 60, 60 strikeouts. Hopefully the second time through, you know, we cash in. All right, Coach, we'll let you get going, buddy. I appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Always. Thanks, thank you. You know, uh, McBride is, I mean, you couldn't really ask for him. He gave up that one mistake, the home run on the 3 2 pitch, as he uh, alluded to. But I mean, overall, he's managed some brace runners, got some defensive help, and done really his job here. Yeah. No, he has done a great job. And, and the, the home run was a good pitch. It wasn't yeah. like he threw a cookie out in the middle of the plate, yeah. it was a good pitch. He scattered the four hits. Ike Irish, the Tiger backstop, steps in there. Ike hitting 333. Has a 423 on base percentage. Had a hit his first time up. Didn't waste any time. Just got up there and roped one to right. And that's off the plates. And there is a walk. That is just the ninth walk of the year. To 60 strikeouts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what? It, I, I think some of that goes to Ike Irish's first at bat where he jumped on a fastball in her half and laced it into right field. Well, that at bat, Hagan, you know, showed him a slider, but then 
missed wide on all the fastballs, was trying to get it away from him. And he missed. Irish, not much of a threat to run. And Hagen Smith is excellent at holding base runners. Here's Bobby Pierce. One of those right handed bats that they would love to get cranked up. Pierce does have four home runs on the year, but struck out his first time up against Hagen Smith, one of five strikeouts tonight for Smith. I think Hagen Smith went to his mouth on the mound. Ooh, one almost sailed. Up against the wall down the right field line. Sometimes as a pitcher, you just need to reset, so you throw a ball over to first base, and you're not really focused on it. Things like that happen. Here's showed bunt, first pitch. Took a strike. Egan usually does not work fastballs into righties. He mainly stays away. Base hit back up the middle. Irish will hold up at second, and they'll have him at first and second. And nobody out. I think that's got to be Auburn's game plan, is trying to get to the fastball from Hagen Smith. Righties see the ball away. Lefties, same thing, see the ball away. You're, not, you're going to have trouble with that explosive fastball in on the hands. And Bobby Pierce does a great job of getting that fastball away, drives it right back up the box. Bound straight back. First runner of the game at second base for Auburn tonight. This is exactly what Auburn needed. Cooper McMurray has been the hot guy. He's got four home runs his last six games, had a couple home runs last weekend at Vanderbilt. Bound straight back. But Hagen Smith has been so good against left-handers. The numbers are just staggered. Look at opponents hitting just 118 against him. Meanwhile, the left-handed hitters on the year at a 347 average with 17 home runs. And McMurray's been really good against left-handed pitching, hitting 414 on the year. This time, though, he swings and misses, and will head back to the dugout. This is just Hagen Smith, and, and just nasty, hard slider starts in her half, stays there. Murray was on time for it. Just one of those things. Just filth. Just Sick. filthy, Dave. It's. I mean, his two strike pitches have been fantastic to me. Yeah. Six strikeouts, just one walk for Hagen Smith. Now here's a guy that laced one out, probably barreled it as well as anybody tonight. Is Chris Stanfield that lined it right out to the left fielder Ross Lovich. Well, initially when he hit this ball, every other day of the week, this is a double or a triple in the gap. Look where Lovich is. He is standing right in front of the canyon, as they call that, the deepest part of the ballpark. Left field is vacant. And first pitch, Stanfield hits it right where he's yeah. standing, and Lovich did not have to move an inch. I'd turn around if I was Hagen Smith. I would be like, dude, where are you at? <laughs> right. What are you protecting right there? It's 325. Runners will advance on a ball down in the dirt. Second and third now to face it may get you a lead. That's pretty good right there. Great jump by Ike Irish. Irish now three out of three in the stolen base department. And that moves up Bobby Pierce to second base. Manfield hanging tough, two and two. Well, Hagen Smith is no stranger to the strikeout. As a pitcher, this situation right here, one to nothing, runner on third base, less than two outs. I am hunting for a strikeout right here. The sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida. Looking to drive in a run here. 
Check swing. He went. That is out number two. Go with a nasty slider in the dirt. Comes out of the same spot as his fastball. It throws 96. Stanfield sees it just a little bit too late. Check swing. Nice block by Hudson White. Mason Mainers. He grounded out to first base his first time up. Mainers, you mentioned, came over from Jacksonville State after three years with the Gamecock program. Was a second team all a son performer last year, starting every game for the Gamecocks. Hit 346, 12 homers, 12 doubles, three triples. I mean, he's just been a hitter. He hit 335 as a sophomore to lead the team and hit over 400 against a Sun competition. He can flat out hit. He's had a couple of big late home runs. That one stays up and in. I feel like Megan Smith is going to try to get back into the count here with probably a slider. He's been very effective with that pitch. Or you can throw 94 up and in. That works too. Two and two the count. Again, Hagen Smith work out of this trouble. Right down the pipe. Strikeout number eight ends the inning and leaves. Getting a big spot right here. His seventh appearance coming against the number one team in America. He's thrown 12 innings. Struck out nine. Opponents have a 271 batting average against him. The first man he faces is the nine hole hitter, Wilmsmeyer. He got a base hit his first time up, but then was thrown out at the plate on a heck of a throw on a fly ball from the right fielder, Bobby Pierce, to end the inning. Slap to short. Hooper Weiss across the diamonds. Well, that's why he was the MAC Defensive Player of the Year. Hard hit ground ball, ranges to his right, backhand pick, hops up quickly, perfect throw across the diamond. Now, the top of the lineup with Peyton Stovall, who's been hit by a pitch and walked. Good to see Stovall healthy. He's been bothered by some injuries the last couple of years. and. Really started this year off with another injury. Got hit by a pitch in a scrimmage back on February 5th. Sends this one out to center field. Stanfield on the run. He'll catch up to it. But he missed the first 12 games with that broken foot. But he is back and healthy. And his coach, Dave Van Horn, a big fan of Mr. Stovall. That was just a bizarre story. Said he got hit in the foot with a changeup. And he was taking one for the team. He saw it the whole way, had plenty of time to get out of the way, and was just being a good baseball player. And it it breaks his foot. Yeah, hit the wrong bone. Yeah. They're glad to have him back, though, at the top of this lineup. Here's Kendall Diggs, who has a couple of strikeouts. One swinging, one looking. fouled out of play. Lead on that 92 mile an hour fastball. Got out there, he's trying to cover the outside part of the plate. Now back. Cam Tilly was really pitching well, but then 
had a hiccup last weekend against Vanderbilt. In an inning in two thirds, got roughed up. He was kind of cruising along until then. Gave up six hits and seven earned runs. Part of the problem was he walked three dudes. But Butch Thompson not afraid to run him back out there. No, he has shown enough. Yeah. How's nice that? Fighter. How's that work? One. It, I'm doing my math right now. 27 innings. Yeah. It's just remarkable. He's already got eight strikeouts in the first four here. The stuff is electric. He's almost like just a bully on the mound of where he gets to two strikes. And he is smelling a strikeout. And he is going to put you away. Every time he gets to two strikes, he's retired nine out of the ten. The only one was Bobby Pierce with a single. He's got Derek Fabian here now. One and two the count. You know, one of the things that jumps at you right away, it's my first time to see Hagen Smith in person since the end of last year. And I mean, his size, his lower half, he's added 20 to 25 pounds. Working on that lower half. And there's strikeout number nine. Second. Only the second strikeout looking. Every other one of them, seven out of the nine has been swinging. And he's getting a lot of these Auburn hitters out outside of the strike zone. Oh, he gets the two strikes, man. It's just over. <laughs> there was a reason when we were coming into the ballpark and even during BP and see these big league scouts come rolling in here. Yeah. I mean, they are just by the waves to watch him pitch. Yeah, they were stacked up pretty good behind home plate, just watching batting practice and sitting around and waiting for can, the show. Yeah, you can always tell the scouts. They all, you know. That ball's hit a mile in the air from Christian Hall. Williams Meyer will make the catch. Two down. I mean, look, you know the game, what it takes at the elite level, and what that looks like. And I'm just curious, if, if you were a scout, and I, they're looking for something. They know he's a good pitcher. Now, they're looking yeah. for the negatives. Like, what what, what are his flaws? But, I mean, what do you see for somebody who's pitched so long? I mean, I, I don't see any flaws. Yeah. And Dave Van Horn spoke glowingly how he came back this year and was with Team USA, comes back after the summer, and doesn't go home. He comes back, adds 20 pounds of muscle, and he is a team captain. And Coach Van Horn said he does not talk much. He's a team captain because of his work ethic. And so I'm going, all right, now what am I missing here? And you sit there and you watch him, and I'm like, he's got a change up. He's got a great slider he can throw behind in the count. He's got a high leverage fastball. He's an intense competitor. I don't have a negative right yeah. now, Dave. It's, it's hard to see it. I mean, if there is one in there, I, I just, uh, I mean, first batter of the game, he fell behind 3-0 and got him to strike out. Yeah, and he threw a couple sliders <laughs> behind in the count. Yeah. Hudson White not making much. That was a rare changeup. Hudson White has run off the field a couple of times now on what he thought was a third strike to end an inning. There it is. Just had to wait another pitch. That is a swing and a miss and another strikeout hanging in there at the top 25 despite getting swept last weekend in Nashville against the Commodores, who, by the way, have the longest winning streak in the SEC at 14 in a row. Don't look now, but Corbs has got it going again. I mean, is that a shock to anybody? It's, it's the same teams every year. They just keep rolling them out. Transfer portal, no transfer portal. Andy, Tennessee. I mean, we talked about Auburn's schedule <laughs> to start the season. You get Vandy in Vandy, go 0 and 3. You get the number one team, Arkansas. Next week they go to Texas A&M, who's what seven, and then after that they got Tennessee at home, who's eight. So Aloy will get the. Painful but free pass to first base. But I, I, you know, it's just yeesh. Butch Thompson is one of the nicest guys that I've ever met in the yeah. game of baseball or in any sport for that matter. What did he do to deserve this? I was going to say, there, is, uh, there are some guys, you know, you deal with sometimes, and you go, I can see why they loaded him up with four <laughs> top 10 teams. But Butch is not one of those guys you'd think that would be the case. 
that is what the uh, as they say the hand that they have been dealt and as much and you speak to this probably more than than most but I mean the mindset of your guys because the way baseball is in that game boy you, it's easy to beat yourself up in a game where success is not the norm yeah yeah and you're looking at this thing going man all right bad start against Vandy we didn't play very well I'm talking about Auburn and they're looking at it like okay we didn't play very well let's see what we got against Arkansas and then you get the best pitcher in the country <laughs> Opening night, and you're going. We could be yeah. 0 and 4 in the SEC in a blink. Good news for Auburn is that they went out and played South Alabama and won a close ball game, two to one, in their midweek game. That ball is again into the darkness of this Auburn sky, but there is Stanfield out there in center field to make the catch. There have been a couple epic fly balls yeah. to center field that. Well, hey, Bobby Pierce, when he doubled up the runner at third, threw him out of home. That. He had all day to yeah. circle around that, get his momentum going. <laughs> Build a little stance underneath <laughs> right, him to, right. to push off on, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a, could be a game-changing play, that double play by Pierce. The fly ball, bases loaded with one out. He catches it and then throws out Wilmsmeyer at the plate to end the inning. Well, his introduction onto the SEC scene, he had nine assists from the outfield and right field. He can flat out throw. I think last year teams didn't run as much on him or try. I mean, it's not like you get these opportunities all the time. Tilly's doing his job right now, which is to keep Auburn right in it, get his offense back up into the plate. Try to get quick outs, eat up some innings. Now, you know, we talked about schedules. Arkansas here on the road at Auburn. They get a little taste of LSU at home next weekend. That'll be something. Fouled back. We'll do it again. Then they get Ole Miss, who's playing some inspired baseball. The two Mississippi schools playing well right now after what have been a couple of disappointing seasons for those guys. Especially Ole Miss last year after winning their national championship. It has been two tough years for Mississippi State, but it looks like they may have figured things out a little bit. Yeah, they took a couple early losses. LSU did too. Yeah. I mean, it's a different uh, different dynamic in college baseball right now. Some really good players in the transfer portal going down. And then a lot of schools going to the mid-majors and getting their really good players. It's just an interesting dynamic of college baseball. That one, one hops off the checks protector. Irish will eat it, and he's a little frustrated. Couldn't keep that about a foot closer, and he might have had a play. Every once in a while, Dave, I can honestly say I don't know what pitch that was. It went 56 feet. Yeah. It came up high on Irish. He did a nice job to keep it in front. As a catcher, you're going down to block. That one, he almost had to stay up. They're going to go to third, and they got a little rundown going on. Aloy, that'll get the runner to second base. He did his job, and now he's just going to. So Aloy will be safe. Not quite sure what the Auburn defense is pointing. They're hoping that Aloy was out of the baseline. So if you're sitting at home, there's two base runners standing on the bag. Tag them both. The runner that was there previously, which is Aloy, is safe. The other runner which was Sprague Lott that came to join him at second base is out. But when in doubt, tag them both. Maybe somebody will flinch and fall off the base. What goes the routine? 6-4-6? Is that all you had? That's it. I thought we had like one more. 
Six, four, six. six. Yeah, the old fielder's choice. It's pretty simple. Routine. Didn't waste a whole lot of time. Lovich looks at a breaking ball in there for a strike. It's 0 2. up and in. That was a little old school 0-2 fastball right there, Dave. Just making sure you're on your toes, right? You move him off the plate, yep. move his feet. Now throw that really good slider that Tilly's got. See, he was so close up there. It got yeah. some dust in his eyes. The, the, the revolutions <laughs> yeah. of the spin yeah. kicked off a little dirt into his eyes. Yeah. yeah, it was that close. I could see that. Lovitz, the transfer from Missouri. Down in the dirt, swings and misses. Irish down to first, and the inning is over. Saw leading one to nothing. Our only run was a home run back in the top of the first inning. Hagan Smith has been phenomenal on the bump. Young man at 3 0 on the year. Many consider maybe the premier arm in all of college baseball is not disappointed tonight if you're. An Arkansas fan, 10 strikeouts, one walk. He's given up three hits. But he will face two. Or excuse me, one, two, and three to start the bottom of the sixth. But that one, fastball in, previous pitch, goes with a backdoor slider on that one. That is out number one in the 11th strikeout. And for Smith, it's his fourth game with 10 or more strikeouts this year. He's only pitched in five. <laughs> <laughs> so he's had success. In the first game, it was like 27 <laughs> degrees. They took him out early? Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Just great stuff. Pitchability. Goes fastball in, gets Weiss on a foul ball. That is, that is where he will miss. Hagen Smith will miss arm side with his fastball. So, if you're talking about a weakness, that would be it. Normally, arm side is your strength, and going into lefties would be his strength. It's really where he gets a little bit loose. Just a second hit batter of the year for Smith. Irish has had some good at bats. Lefty yeah. lefty matchup got a single in the first, walked in the fourth. Here's Bobby Pierce. He singled his last time up. Usually after I hit guys, I always throw over. Just to see how they're feeling. That ball is blasted deep in the air to left. Is it enough? To the warning track, and the catch is made there. And drop! He dropped it! Everybody is safe. They'll be at second and third. Boy, Lovich out there looked like he had an easy play, and... He doesn't know where the wall is. He, 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 you can see he's leaning back, trying to feel for finding the wall. And the ball just bounces out of his glove. It, he had a long run. He was over in the canyon again. Had a long run for a routine fly ball. Fouled straight back. And here's a guy, Cooper McMurray, who has had a tough night against Smith with back-to-back -back strikeouts. But this guy is an excellent hitter. Came in at 362. It's dropped a few points now to 352. 
94 paint to black. Arkansas's defense is playing back right now. Cooper McMurray, and I'm, I'm making this sound really simple, can just hit a ground ball to second base. He's going to get an RBI. Can't do it. Comes back 95 on the fastball. Well, the first two strikeouts of Cooper McMurray were on sliders. So he gets him with a slider outside the zone, gets him with a slider in the zone. And so what does Hagen Smith do? He takes the game to a different level, and he attacks the inner half on Cooper McMurray with a fastball. I just love the fact Hagen Smith works so fast. Keeps his defense engaged. I mean, by the time that you blink, he is already in his motion coming home. Stanfield lays off it. You know, one of the things that uh, learned tonight before the game is that Arkansas, they don't call pitches for any of their pitchers. Yeah. They let the guy, the catcher and the pitcher make these decisions on the mound. I mean, I would trust Hagen Smith. So, which means that they're basically trusting Hudson White to call the pitches. But they might be the only team in college baseball that does not call pitches for their, their, their pitchers. And they don't do it for anybody, right? Nobody. Yeah, they all, they, they, they feel like as a staff that they work for these guys in the fall and preseason to get them ready and know what works. And they believe that the pitcher has the best feel of what's working. Another left-handed bat. That's just off the plate. Maynard's looking for his first bases loaded hit this season. He has come up with some big moments for Auburn. Had a couple of late inning home runs. Just a professional hitter. Hit 346 at Jacksonville State last year. He's got a very calm demeanor in the box right now. This is going to be interesting. A little get me over 93 mile an hour strike. <laughs> <laughs> see if he goes with a slider right here. He's shown the capacity to throw a slider behind in the count. Foul straight back. Or he can go 95 on the on the hands. And now you feel, I mean, as a pitcher, do you feel like now you just fouled that fastball off at 95? Now do you feel like you own him right now with two strikes? Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got you now. Yeah. I, got, I got two pitches to punch you out right here. Ground ball to the right side. Underhand toss, and they get out of it. Went out of the Southeastern Conference. Auburn rounding things out as a 23rd ranked team in America. First pitch to Hudson White, sent out to Right center and Stanfield is there and he'll make the catch one down. I mean, if you're looking at the game, though, and you see that Hagen Smith's got 12 strikeouts. Yeah, I'm losing track now. Yeah. I mean, there's too many, um, but it's been an exciting bunch of zeros. You know, when you're looking at the box score right now, it's like it looks like a bunch of zeros. Looks like it's not that exciting, but it's been really fun to watch. Yeah, he may be done the way he was getting some hugs and Hand slaps. Why don't they give the guys hugs in the middle of the game when you're pitching well? Because they're not sure how it's going to finish, and they don't want to go give that love out if it's not warranted. That's why. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Because you can't take that hug back. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you can't give him another one. <laughs> no, no. You can give him another yeah. one. I mean, why is yeah, that like yeah. always the sign that you just yeah, know a guy's yeah. out of the game when guys are hugging and high fiving? Well, well, and I, I thought you didn't bother a pitcher like in the middle of a game, right? You had to go sit there. Did, I mean, what was what was your philosophy about that when you know? You're, don't don't talk to me today. Yeah. Don't come out to the mound. Let's not right. have a nice conversation. Like in the dugout between innings. Nobody talked to me. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. So who's gonna hug you, right? <laughs> right. No, you'd spike him. <laughs> <laughs> shove shove him down. Right. Why? I just wanted to give you a hug. <laughs> Souza, that breaking ball. He's having a hard time getting a feel for that one right now. It's sailed up and away a couple of times. Yeah, check your grip. Getting a little bit long out front. 
the curveball, you got to be really short and back on the backswing and short in front to create that 12 to 6 spin. That would be the left field area, little picnic area. There's a couple Arkansas fans in their recliners. Well, the eighth pitch of this at bat about to come up for Nolan Souza. Souza committed to Arkansas as a sophomore in high school and never really wavered. He was all in on the Hogs. That one's a little bit low, and Nolan gets the free pass to first base. Well, here's a gorgeous night for some college baseball here in Auburn. It's Ty Wilmsmeyer steps in. Ty, another one of those Missouri transfers. First year at Arkansas after four years in Columbia. How weird would it be for them last week when their Missouri Tigers come into town and they're now wearing a completely different jersey? I'm sure there were some awkward moments. Yeah. I mean, you got Lovich, you got Wilmsmeyer. Steve Beezer, by the way, was their coach. He was let go of his duties. He ends up at Jacksonville State. Garrett Jackson takes over. He was at Memphis, but a former assistant at Missouri. Swing and a miss by Wilmsmeyer. And there are a couple of Jacksonville State players on this Auburn roster after that coaching change at Jacksonville State. You just feel like a lot of the midweek games that these teams have against in-state, I'm not going to call them rivals, right. but when Jacksonville State comes in, you don't think Auburn's looking around going, hey, that dude can swing. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. You know, that Christian Hall came from UAB. Runner goes. That one bounces. Hard off that brick wall right back to Ike Irish, who I think maybe he got a little mixed up or something. That was kind of a weird sequence. I think he was popping up to try yeah. to throw the runner out. And then Tilly spikes a slider at about 58 feet. Ooh. And all Irish can do is try to back pick and short hop, knowing the ball's going to come right back to him in a minute. One of the uh, one of the results of the new with Missouri, Rob Vaughn over at Alabama did a nice job. He came over from Maryland. Well, they won a couple of Big Ten championships. Well, that He's Alabama Alabama team is pretty good now. Got them up to a number eleven. Yeah, they're. Uh, I've not seen them yet. They can hit it, and they're starting pitching, starting to come, come around for them. And uh, they're going to be a tough out in the league this year. But Alabama, I mean, it was a heck of a job by Jason Jackson, the pitching coach who took over midway through the year last year. Yeah. Got him into the NCAA tournament when it could have gone south in a hurry. They'll get the out at first. Hernandez making the play. I'll tell you what, Hernandez moves well over there in oh, second man. base now. He can cover a lot of ground. Well, he started the season out one for 17. They had, did not blink about leaving him at second base. I mean, the dude can flat pick it. I got to give up a bat somewhere, right? Right. Hypothetically, old school theories. Walk into this one with two outs and a runner at third base, and that one's up and in on Stovall. And Boy, he just did get out of the way. He's already been hit once today. And he's right back into the box. I mean, that's 92. First time you're seeing this lefty-lefty matchup, and you get a fastball right at your head. And he stays in on that pitch, too. He stays in on the slider, yeah. <laughs> All right, you know what? Stovall's my new favorite player. Yeah, no. He didn't just even get, flinch no. on that pitch. Just got dusted and stayed in there for a 1-0 slider. Did he go? 
We've got a little gauntlet nope. right here of Arkansas with lefties. Stovall, Diggs, and then McLaughlin in the four hole. So Auburn got it to the point in the seventh inning, two outs. Bauman might try to finish this. Auburn's not able to put a whole bunch of runs on the board. Boy, that's a tough arm slot for a left-handed hitter from yeah. Bauman. I mean, yeah. He started a little bit last year, ended up finding this spot, seventh, eighth inning. With 27 Ks. McIntyre was a starter last year. Ten games started, was eight and three, a couple of saves. But he really likes coming out of the bullpen. Since, uh, Coach Van Horn says he's got a lot of confidence coming out of the pen. <laughs> Fastball's going to be upper 80s, low 90s. Cutter, changeup, curveball. Two and one the count. I'm going to call that one a cutter. Okay. I'll go with that. That's a big cutter. Well, it comes over the top, and it's now three or two and two on Derek Fabian. Just so tough to hit as a hitter. You're seeing fastball arm speed, but as a pitcher, you're just getting on the outside of the ball and basically slicing just the edge of it and creating a little bit of spin in about four to six inches of break. That was a third straight cutter right there for the punch out. Hey, the, boy, every pitch is magnified at this point in the game. Just a one run lead. Here's a guy that if he barrels one, it could go for days. Yes, major pop. He is transfer from UAB via UT Martin. He was in the top 10 in the SEC in games played, home runs, RBI, hits. Fouls that one off. But Matt Hobbs, the pitching coach for Arkansas, boy, what a job he has done with this staff. And, you know, he's got some veteran arms over there, but you know, he's talking to me. You know, he only likes to bring in a few, just a couple of transfer portal guys. He likes yeah. to really work with his guys, get them to a Hagen Smith, classic example of that. Yeah. I love that. I feel like it's getting lost. Yeah. The development side of college baseball. It's now. And it's just the state of the game of where you, you know, everybody's under pressure to win and have successful seasons. It's hard to spend time. And there's another punch out from McIntyre. Breaking ball down out of the zone after a fastball up and in. Fourteen strikeout of the night? Yes. Fourteen. I'm really good at math, Dave. Well, 12 plus 2. So you did go to class here, didn't you? I did, as far as you know. <laughs> right. Here is Javon Hernandez, the second baseman, hitting ninth, one for two. Average just at 213. He got off to a really rough start. He was one for 17. Felt like he got things going a little bit. I mean, to get the average up to 200. It's five for eight in his last two games. Slap to the right side. Oh, a nice stab over there by McLaughlin. They get the out again. Oh, my goodness. Close play at first. That'll be the third out. Auburn immediately over there. Yeah, not even. Thank you, Scott. It was a close play, worthy of a review, but great job defensively by the Hawks. And that'll take us to the top of the eighth inning now. 
guess who's coming up fourth? Yeah, the guy that makes the play. The guy that makes the play. He's got a bat. Here's International baseball law. <laughs> Make a great play. You get to bat that next inning. There is a strike to Diggs. Two, three, and four coming up. Bahiva Aloy, the only run of the game. It came in the top of the first inning on a solo home run to right field. I right, chopper. Be a tough play. Nope. Her charges and dropped over there. And that's gonna be, that's got to be an E on the pitcher, I would think. It looked I like would, a throw. I, was I good. agree. No, yeah. It, yeah, but it, as close as those two are, that's called the Bermuda Triangle, and they're hours and days spent in spring training. This particular play. Problem was Bauman gets the ball a little bit behind him, so he's trying to barehand it with his off hand, his his throwing hand, yeah. and he takes his eye off the ball. Trying to look for the bag, right? And, and that's a tough, yeah. it's a really tough play. You're assuming you know where the bag is, so you, you catch the ball, and then you find the bag after yeah. you catch the ball, but he went in the wrong order, tried to find the bag before he caught the ball. I mean, there's not much you can do. McMurray did a nice job, fielded the ball. The throw could have been a little bit more up the line so that Bauman runs into it instead of him having to reach a little bit behind him. Boy, smashed out the center, but right at Stanfield. Boy, that came off the bat in a hurry from Malloy. That'll be the first out of the inning. How about a 112 off the bat right there? Exit velocity. That was a, a, a missile. I do like the fact that, I mean, there's some of the analytics I really like, and the exit velocity describes everything. All I got to do is go exit velocity was 112. All right. That equals missile. Here's Ben McLaughlin. Fouls that off his foot. That got some really good rollout after it went off of his leg. Got all the way to McMurray. <laughs> Tanner Bauman is a nightmare for left-handed hitters with that arm slot. <laughs> and a sweeping slider coming right out of that out of that same fastball that's been up and in on some of these lefties. Fouls another one. See McLaughlin frustrated. The first one goes off of his leg. That one he missed a pitch that he felt like he could have gotten, gotten to. Fastball down in the zone at 90 miles an hour. That was another one off at the plate. And Bauman's not exactly a small dude coming at you either. He's 6'4", no. 6'5", 225 pounds. Yeah, and as a left-handed hitter, you're feeling like the ball's coming from behind your head. <laughs> right. But McLaughlin's putting together a nice at bat. Hitting 304 on the year. A couple of home runs. That one misses inside, two and two. Through the left side, the shift was on, an easy base hit. That one bobbled out in left by Mainers for a moment. Nothing happening there, but boy, what a job at the plate by Ben McLaughlin just then. That was just a great at bat. Fouled off some pitches, 
Auburn shifts the infield over to the right side and thinking he's going to pull. And he had been pulling all those foul balls. But he gets into two strike mode and just shoots this ball to third base and there's no third baseman in the area. This is going to bring up pitching. I was going to say, I'm not sure why I did that. <laughs> Both these coaches, I mean, it, it, they have just really fantastic staffs. Yeah. Yes, they do. And it's a, you know, it's about time. It took a while, but finally, you know, there's, you can actually hire more than a couple of guys to be your assistant coaches. It took college baseball a long time to realize how much work goes into running these teams and coaching up these players. You only can only have two paid assistants before. Yeah, and then one volunteer Tier, that's yeah. getting paid on camps and however yeah. else they can make some money. Well, they got that situated. Well, and you got one guy that's out on the road recruiting. Yeah. Because I got to keep the pipeline going. And on those days, I, and I know Butch Thompson turns over a lot of the offense to Gabe Gross, and he's turned over a lot of the pitching to Everett Tiford and the assistant pitching coach Scott Foxhall. That's Gabe Gross right there and Everett Tiford. Gabe, seven years in the show. It is three and one to Sprague Lot. Bauman's going to have to make a decision right here. Go into attack mode, square up home plate, and see what Sprague Lot's got. Or tinker around him and try to get to left handed Lovich. That ball is out to right field. Bobby Pierce to the warning track, makes the catch. That'll be out number two. That'll get Kendall Diggs over to third base. So first and third now with two down, and now you're back to the lefty-lefty matchup. And there might be a pinch hitter coming up for Lovich. I believe that's what's going to happen over there for Arkansas. Peyton Holt's going to grab a bat for the Hawks. Let's see if Auburn wants to answer back. Or will they leave? The big left-hander out there, which I think that's what they're going to do. First and third. In these spots, Auburn's gone to either John Armstrong or Will Cannon, but chasing a run. You don't want to burn a couple of your top guys, so they're going to go with Tanner Bauman. Starts him off, breaking ball, ahead 0-1. So Peyton Holt stepping in there. Holt, 348 on the year. His 17th appearance has started 12 games. Nice to pull a 348 hitter off the bench in this situation. Is coming off the bench. But now he's chasing it. He's behind one and two. His second year with the Hawks. Played 13 games versus the league last year and hit 441 in those games. Not going to happen here. Bauman fired up, coming off the mound. The Hogs will leave two. Trick stuff. And when he got you to two strikes, just call it a night. Now McIntyre back on the bump for Arkansas. Runs into the top of the Auburn lineup, up one. Sharply hit out to second. That's where Stovall stands. He'll make the play. One down, and Cooper Weiss is retired for the fourth time tonight. How about some of the positioning by Arkansas? That looked like off the bat it was going to be a base hit. Instead, Peyton Stovall standing right there for a routine four to three. Irish was probably the only hitter for Auburn that was really successful in his at-bats against Hagen Smith. One for one, 
A walk. Hit by pitch. Well, this is not going to be on me if we just jinxed him, by the way. Who's it going to be on? You just you, said it. You. I didn't say it. I just looked at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> you literally did, didn't you? You just looked at the screen. Yeah. I am not saying that. Right. It's 0 and 2, and here we go. <laughs> Playing production. They put that stat up. McIntyre misses way upstairs. One and two. You know, I'm all for 0 2 pitches being out of the zone, but the waste of pitch that's not even close to the zone, it's not competitive, not a fan. Now, the year or so in Baltimore where we were getting fined if we gave up an 0-2 hit, yeah. oh, it was not even <laughs> that. These, I mean, you might as well just put the, four uh, the, the fingers up. I'm going to throw a pitch out here. Did you guys really get fined for that? That wasn't a joke? That was serious? Yeah, it was serious. Oh, my gosh. Well, we got fined if we didn't cover first base. So we had a bunch Tough of year, stuff. huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was a bad year. <laughs> sure the locker room was fantastic. There it is. Yeah, our uh, production crew. I'm going to give it to the entire production team. <laughs> this is a nasty breaking ball made back entire diving out of the zone. Right where you want it, right behind home plate. Second out of the inning. He's only got three strikeouts. 15 punch outs today for the Auburn Tigers. Pierce up there hacking away, trying to tie this up with one swing. Pierce has struck out, reached on an air, and singled back in the fourth. Five hits for Arkansas, three hits for Auburn, each team with one air. Pierce was second on the team last year in home runs. He has got pop. Sharply hit, but again, played him perfectly. Yeah. Stovall didn't even have to move. One, two, three inning, we're heading. The Frank Thomas lounge yeah. underneath the stands. Will Cannon's been their closer for the past year and a half. First pitch fouled off. Fastball slider. Fastball 93, 94, really good breaking ball. Hudson White's had a good night. Really nice job of hitting what is given to him. Fastball's away, and he's done a really nice job of driving the ball. Plates. One and two to count. Rain coming in tomorrow. Not sure how they're going to handle that situation. There'll be a discussion after the game about what they want to do, but it seems like the chances of rain are diminishing a bit, so they may try to wait it out. That's a base hit. Talking about some of the renovations. They're out and left. All this was promised to me in 1987, Dave. Well, it took your big league paycheck to help kickstart this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is some Auburn royalty in the building tonight. We just saw Frank Thomas earlier, saw Tim Hudson down there, got Greg Olson. All you guys are on the wall out there. A little intimidating. Just missing Bo. You have to play with two of those guys. Bo Jackson, a senior my freshman year, and then Frank was one year behind me, so we played together for two years. I'll tell you what, those scrimmage games were a lot of fun. 
Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. <laughs> See sarcasm. Yeah. Now, did Frank take you deep a few times in scrimmages? Not in scrimmage. He got me in a big league game he to did? win a game, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yep. great. Remember that stupid 0-2 fastball up and away? Oh. That was my learning lesson. Yeah, he drove, yeah, right, dro right. drove it out over right field, and I was like, oh, yeah. man. I mean, the, the, the funny part of the story is, so he gets me in, like, extra innings to win the game yeah. in Baltimore. Next night, same situation. I got a one-run lead. Robin Ventura, who was really hard to get out, comes up and lays down a bunt. And nobody in the area code was <laughs> thinking he was going to bunt. There's a steal. Oh, what a strike from Ike Irish. Woods has spoken glowingly about his defensive yeah. skills picking up. He barely played probably two or three games last year as a catcher. He's now full time behind the plate. Quick release, perfect strike. That'll shut down the running game. Yeah, I'll take notice of that for the rest of the weekend. Yeah. But so Ventura lays down yeah. a bunt. And my third baseman's back. Nobody's thinking he's going to bunt. And then Frank comes walking up. <laughs> and I'm like, he just took me deep last night. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, was, I looked over at Ventura at first base, and it's one of those where we played together on the USA yeah. team. And I just looked at him, and I was like, that's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, y why don't you try to go deep? Don't bring him back up. <laughs> Did Frank say anything round the bases? No. He put his head, he, he, for all 500 whatever home runs he had, he just put his head down and ran. Compressed a few baseballs in his day. Well, he was just weird to face because he was so far off the plate. And all he wanted you to do was throw him a fastball away, yeah. thinking he couldn't get his arms out there to get it. Yeah. And he was a good foot and a half from the line, so he was way off the plate. And so you have to throw him fastballs in, but you're throwing it, you don't have any yeah. space. You have this huge space where you feel like you're throwing it out into outer space. And if you throw him a fastball away, it was like, that was a mistake. Two and two on Wilmsmeyer, the nine hole hitter. Back. Irish can't hang on to it. We'll do it again. 95 from Cannon. He can kick Ooh. it up. Yeah. He can kick it up. Got a couple of starts last year and then really flourished in the bullpen at the end of games with fifth in the SEC with save in saves. Do it again at two and two. Bases are empty. Auburn down to their final three outs. We have McMurray, Stanfield, Mainers. <laughs> Popped him up the right side. McMurray says he has it. And he wasn't lying. So four, five, and six. We got that timeout for Gabe Gross to come out of the dugout. I don't think I've ever seen that. They stopped play so Gabe could come out of the dugout. I didn't know you had to have somebody over there. I didn't think you did. Check swing by McMurray. I mean, he has just been tearing up baseballs his last 14, but an 0 for to this point. He probably couldn't wait to get to the bat rack after Hagen Smith left. That's the gackle changeup, 88. Trying to take advantage of Cooper McMurray up there, probably trying to hunt a high leverage fastball and do some damage with it. Take advantage of the hitter. 
in attack mode. Having been in these spots over my career, you know who can do some damage. You know what counts you try to stay out of in fastball counts. And so he goes up there, a couple of change ups, some off speed. And then you got 96 in the tank. He was a late round draft pick by the Reds last year. Turned that one down to come to Arkansas. Now it's interesting, 3-2 counts. I like the thought, you're thinking McMurray's got to get the bat started. A good slider coming out of that same zone. Just missed with it. Here's where it's time to dance. Strength on strength. 97. I, I just love the fact that he just dialed it up from 95 to 97 when it's time to dance. And I'm talking strength on strength. McMurray is scorching hot. A couple of home runs last week in Bandy. Now here's 97. Let's dance. Now it's Chris Stanfield with one down. He chokes up on that bat a bit after seeing 97. Just off the plate at 96. I mean, he hit the hardest ball tonight for Auburn. That ball in the left in the left field gap that Lovich was standing right there. That ball was blistered. He can get out there and hook some things. That's going to slice foul. As I say that, he shoots one down the right field line. Gackle came out last year, considered the 40th best overall prospect in the country and the 10th best right-handed pitcher in the class of 2023. So there's 40 better players that came out of it. Exactly. Wow. Here's a chopper out to second. Stovall makes the play. That is two down. Is anybody else shocked that Stovall was in the right spot? Yeah, it's, it's the analytics team for Arkansas has been spot on in their shifting and player placement. Mainers has had two home runs in the last month. Late, late in games. Hit a home run against Austin P in the bottom of the ninth in a tie game for a walk off. They had a big two run home run against Iowa in their opening series down in Jacksonville, Florida. He's probably hunting a pitch, I would be guessing, to try to do some damage. Out in front of that breaking ball, Mainers behind 0 and 2. I'm going to say that he was probably hunting something off speed, Dave. The way he got around and spun that breaking ball. up in the zone. See him shaking his head right there. He knew he had him on that pitch. He knew he was somewhat, he's been sitting off speed the whole at bat. He got him with a good high leverage fastball and he just overthought it and missed. Now it's even at two and two. Goes back to that fastball right here, tries to get it away. Ninety-six on the heater, and this one is in the books. We've talked about Arkansas's dominating pitching.